Okay, so what do we actually want to replace the meat with? Our superfoods. Now this is not just a pun for my products. This is actually what superfoods do. I'll give you some stats. Spirulina. How many of you eat spirulina? All of you should put up your hands because you all had spirulina when you came in today. <laughs> Sneaky, eh? Um, highest protein food known to man. 70% protein by weight. Check out, we've got tofu at the bottom. Bolt on because it's dry. And then we've got spirulina, 70% by weight. Is there some connection between the cinnamon and the nail? That is what spirulina looks like under a microscope. It's a spiral algae. Yeah, it's actually a spiral, it's just flat, it's 2D. Is that some analogy to DNA? Yeah, sure. As a primordial food, it's very similar to DNA. It contains nutrients that actually are amazing for rebuilding DNA. Protein food. How much protein do you need a day? So let's do some numbers. It's, recommend, it's reckoned that um, by cooking the meat, you lose half the protein. But because of spirulina, the peptide chains, the amino acid chains, are so short, it's very easy for the body to absorb the protein, very high biological value. So it's estimated that it's about 10 times more absorbable than meat, spirulina is. Now if you then take into account the fact that you destroy half the protein of meat when you cook it, you can say spirulina is 20 times more digestible. So gram for gram, if you want to get the equivalent protein from spirulina as meat, if you ate say 12 or 13 grams of spirulina tablets, which is, what's that, 25 tablets? 25 to 30 tablets, which sounds like a lot, but it's a little. I mean, I ate 14 just before the early evening started. It's actually a food. It's a food, you can eat that many. About, yeah. But no, you don't eat them in one go. I mean, you can have, I'm just giving you an example. So, 20 spirulina tablets, 10 grams. That would be the equivalent in protein absorption you would have to eat a 200 gram steak. So you can choose 200 gram terra steak or 20 spirulina tablets. To me that's technology because it's using less resources to accomplish the same or more. Sorry, just quickly, and how the 20 gram? 20 grams? Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, that's like 3 tablespoons. So you're thinking on it. Forget about tablets, it's like swallowing tablets. Three tablespoons of powder in a bit of water. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> People still drink lip blitz. Spirulina water, no problem. It's not having hair. Look at that. Look at that delicious colour. So, I mean, spirulina's got a whole bunch of other stuff going for it, but I'm focusing on protein. My favorite protein source is hemp seed. 35% protein by weight in the seed. This is the amino acid comparison between um, egg whites, tofu, human breast milk, and full fat cow's milk. And the red one is hemp seed. So, gram for gram, hemp seed has more of those amino acids than any of the others, and those are the essentials. It has all of the essential amino acids and higher values than any other stuff. So literally my structure is made from hemp seed. I consume probably 20 to 30 to sometimes 40 grams of hemp seed every day. It's what I eat. Now when I was living in England, this was cheap. Because you could buy a kilogram of hemp seed for like 10 rand. In South Africa, it's expensive because we've got to pay import and duties and shipping and because for some reason our government thinks that it's Dachau and we can't grow it yet. You know? The only two countries really that bag growing of hemp is America and South Africa. The whole of Europe grows it, um, Canada grows it, the UK grows it, Russia grows it, China grows it. I mean last year my friend Tony, who grows hemp, he's on his third year now as a, as a trial. He's got an electric fence around his field. It's insane. I kid you not. Yeah, it's a regulation. So I said, can I have your hemp seed, you know? Because you use the fiber, but, you know, you do nothing with the seed. He's like, he's not allowed to give me the seed. So I'm like, how much seed are you going to have? He said, between two or three tons of seed, or three hectares. So I said, what's going to happen to those seed? He said, I'll just fall on the ground and rot. That's exactly what happened to it last year. It's exactly what's going to happen to it this year again. Because of legislation. So I could offer hemp seed to people like 10 around a kilo, but 
I'm not allowed to. You know, that's when you just start growing at yourself and giving the finger. <laughs> well, I mean, what else can you do? Oh, there's some, there's some kind of stuff. Uh, so, Union Grace is the purple one. It's one of the lowest, actually. The purple is the fourth one along, next to the light blue one, between the blues. How does the Colostrum compare? Because, um, isn't the first couple of R's? Colostrum you wouldn't take for protein, you would take that for transfer factors. Colostrum has a new transfer factors in it. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing, amazing food. If someone has an immune issue or is recovering from some kind of immune thing, it can really help them. But again, you know, if you're getting cow's colostrum, you've got to be so careful about the source. And the hemp powder? So the hemp protein powder, that's the whole seed ground down. Also 35% protein, mix it in smoothies and juices. Yeah. The green is ground, you oxidized. No, very little oxidized because there's so many antioxidants present too. So in flaxseed, there's no antioxidants. So you want to be very careful with flaxseed when you grind it because it goes around so quickly. Hemp seed way more stable, chia seed way more stable. Yeah. So oh, two more, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I want to go back a little bit to ask you, uh, what is your view on smoked food? Smoked fish and smoked So smoked is, is um, there's a whole bunch of chemicals that are released in the smoking process that literally impregnates into the meat, which are in themselves incredibly toxic. So I understand that if you're living in a very cold climate, and you need to survive winter, you would smoke as a preservation. We don't need to do that anymore. You can have access to fresh food, so don't even bother. It's just, you know, it's like putting your mouth over an exhaust pipe. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Sorry, I can't hemp seed or powder? They're both available. So the hemp seed is just the whole seed. It makes a lovely white, creamy milk. The hemp powder is a little bit more gritty, and uh, it doesn't blend into milk, so you would use that in your juices or your smoothies. Um, you can choose either. Depends on your taste. Obviously, the hemp powder is much cheaper, much cheaper than the hemp seeds, because to mechanically hull hemp seeds is an expensive process. Okay. Um, I've always wondered the action of a smoothie machine, the blade and the top. Of the there is some loss of nutritional value, okay. but it's way less. <sighs> and no one's actually done the test, so it's all speculation. The mechanical breakdown doesn't get as far as breaking down chemical structure or molecular structure. Heat breaks that down. So it's far less of a destructive influence um, on the actual nutrients that you want to absorb. It normally is really just breaking down fiber. So I mean, how do you eat hemp? This is out of our superfood book. Hemp burgers. It's one of my favorite recipes. Hemp burgers. <coughs> hemp onion bread. Amazing. Now, if you guys want either of these recipes, I'm happy to email you this page. Just tell our office about it and we'll send it through to you. I couldn't print them all out because it was like half of 150 pages. But that's in the Magic of Superfoods book. Okay, we're running a bit late, so let me whistle along. I love that picture. Hey, how's he? Amazing. Amazing, what a creature. What does he eat? How, how does he get so ripped? What is going on there? So I found out what their diet is. 67% 60, of their diet is fruit. 67% of their diet is fruit. 17% is leaves, seeds, and stems. And 3% is termites and caterpillars. Amazing, man. Eh? <laughs> what about these dogs? What are they eating? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a bodybuilder, body clearly, but. You know? These are all vegan bodybuilders, I kid you not. Yeah, this is veganbodybuilding.com. Go check it out. This is just one shot. I actually have like 150 of these guys. I've got it, I was like, put it over the Hey, I mean, you can see from there, they're not it's small. <laughs> vegan bodybuilders. Not even vegetarian, not even eating eggs or any of that stuff. Vegan. So, the old fallacy that you know, vegans are like emaciated and it's like, man, that's, you just need to know what to eat. And you know now because I told you what to eat. So, um, Baron kind of 
went on a batting diet. Yeah, I changed the name of it to ranting because it's more ranting. We also call it the Real Green Revolution. We're thinking of writing a book called The Real Green Revolution. Do you think it's risky? Do you think we're going to call it? I'm sorry. Do you know it? Do you guys are going to have to find my court case you now. The Real Green Revolution. We're thinking of having like Che Guevara holding like lettuce and like having it all in green and like green star. And, okay? I think it'd be good. So, so what is the diet really made up of? No refined sugars, no sweet fruits, no greens, no grains, and no cooked carbs. So this is if you want to lose weight, because that's what the bounty guys is all about. Is if you want to lose weight, do this. Okay. No refined sugars, that includes honey. Any sweet things. No sweet fruits, that includes apples. They are actually sweet. No cooked grains, no cooked carbs. So no sweet potato, no that and that. Those are all cooked carbs. What you want to focus on is high fiber, non-starchy veg. So what we mean here, broccoli, cauliflower, courgettes. Like you do a meal of steamed broccoli flour, cauliflower, courgette, broccoli flour. And then you put a hemp cream sauce on it, like to give us a guitar card if she loves it. It's like cauliflower cheese. But the cheese is hemp seeds. So you get all your protein, all your essential fatty acids, you're getting something filling with fiber. Amazing meal. You can eat a whole bowl of that and be like totally satiated. Raw soups, we have lots of raw soup recipes in both books. You can just blend stuff up in your Vitamix, vegetables, um, tomato soups, um, all sorts of things. Salads, obviously key, getting in the salads. Green vegetable juice. Non-sweet, as much as you can drink. Wheatgrass juice, as much as you can drink. That's what Barrett focused on. Wheatgrass juice and green vegetable. Well, I mean, we were doing up to 100 mils of wheatgrass a day. Now, I wouldn't recommend you start there. Because you will project our heart. <laughs> but you can build up to it slowly over time. I mean, we, we contemplated, it was like, wheatgrass takes long to grow. So I'm like, oh, I've got kukuyu and buffalo everywhere, so just go out and pick it and we just juice it and we drink that. Much easier. Cheaper. And cheaper. Sprouts. Sprouts. Lots of that's in the salad. Yeah, lots of sprouts in the salad. Sprouts, high protein, high micronutrient value, lots of that. Does, does wheatgrass have gluten in No, wheatgrass does not have gluten, unless you juice the seed. But that's normally in the soil. Mm -hmm. As long as you cut the grass, no gluten. Okay. Gluten is in the seed, in the soil. What's the problem with gluten? What's the issue? Gluten intolerance. It's very sticky. It causes digestive discomfort. It's just years of eating refined things. I mean, it's not. It shouldn't be a problem. But because of the huge quantities that people have been consuming it, it becomes a problem. A digestive enzyme yeah. will certainly help. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't eat wheat. That's one food I've been eating for a very long time. Why can not eat honey? It's sweet. Raw honey. Raw honey is also sweet. Yeah, now, raw honey. Why are you eat raw honey? I'm not anti it. I love it. I mean, I'm a big I love honey. But if you want weight loss, yeah. you want to get the sugar out of your system. So this is just purely a weight loss thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the... I mean, it's... I, it also happens to be a pretty good diet. I mean, this is basically what we eat. Yeah, but it takes a while to get there. Sorry, what fruits are you recommending? Uh, cucumber, avocado, tomato. What about you? Fruits. Fruit. Yeah, those are fruits. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, those are fruits. Yeah. <laughs> Lemon. Uh, grapefruits. Grapefruit's amazing. Berries and having a lot of grapefruit. Grapefruit also has a chemical in it that dissolves cellulite. So lots of grapefruit juice. Very good. Um, Moderate fat. So this is your smoothies, really. You're adding in your seeds, your hemp seeds, your chia seeds, and lots of coconut, coconut fat, um, coconut oil. Lots of avos. Like if you're feeling like you need something, eat an avo, eat two avos, eat five avos. It's mostly water. Is it depends on how much exercise you do. Because, you know, calories held or calories stored, you know, so you 
you've got to burn it off. If you eat too many fats, your body holds it to that too. But most fat comes from sugar. Most of the fat is created in the system from excess sugar in the system. It causes insulin to be released. Insulin is a fat-producing hormone. It's a way of trapping the sugar so it doesn't kill you outright. Basically what insulin is doing, it's saving your life. But fat is the byproduct. So cutting the sugar out and increasing the amount of fat you eat, as crazy as it sounds, can make you lose weight. That's why everyone imagines lose weight. Because cut out the sugar, increase the fat. Which part? The whole thing? <laughs> Cut out the sugar and increase the fat. It's simple. How bad is a rich veg why it's a veg or a meat to your guys? Probably pretty bad, yeah. yeah. Now, now, we can be clever about this. So you can go onto Google and you can, you can research top pesticide fruits, top pesticide vegetables. You get a list of like 10 to 15. So you know which ones are the worst to get, and you avoid those. Make sure you don't like strawberries, they're always in the top three. You know, they grow on the ground, where the bugs are, they're delicious. It's like, they're going to use a lot of poison to keep those bugs off. Because the bugs are like, oh, what a strawberry. Yeah. So you just don't eat strawberries, unless they're sort of bad again. Um, whereas blueberries and raspberries and blackberries, they're higher up, safer. Birds eat them, so they use nets and stuff. Yeah. Um, so just find that list, and then you know. And then you can find the clean 15 list, which, is the, which are the cleanest foods from this. Like kiwi fruit, very clean. Avocado, very clean. You, know, you can find out which ones are clean and then you can get those from the supermarket. Uh, then we move to low protein. So when I say low protein, I'm just meaning within the range that we need for human consumption. You know, 10%, 5% even. You know, so here we're talking about hemp seeds, chia seed, flax seed, spirulina, all the greens, wheatgrass shots, wheatgrass powder. You eat those through the day, you're going to get plenty of protein. And no sugar at the end, just again, in case you can get it right at the top. 